Hey YouTube, Eric here from Guided. On today's episode, I am going to be going over a new rifle that I'm setting up. It's all factory, nothing custom on it. I'm gonna turn you guys around and show you Savage Model 110. And it comes, it came factory with this HS Precision stock. And this rifle is chambered in a 338 Lapua. And I'm running an Arkin EPL4, the six to 24 by 50 on this. And I'm also running a lane suppressor. Now I have a story about the lane suppressor that you guys will kind of be interested to hear. I'll kind of tell you what happened. So I had the suppressor on here. Now this suppressor is designed for 338, up to a 338 caliber. And I'll show you a picture. I'll screenshot a picture of what happened. But I, I was actually starting to shoot this gun last week and noticed that I had some something was flying out of the end of the barrel so I came around and right here on the edge blew the edge of this and I'll show you the picture I blew the edge of this uh, suppressor right out there's a big chunk missing and so basically what happened was is they got me a new suppressor I took the they wanted to see the gun so I took the gun back and it just looked like the suppressor was just sitting on there ever so slightly crooked. And I mean, it was almost not visible by your eye. What you had to do is, and I have to give credit to Eric, the uh, one of the gunsmiths over at LRI, Long Rifles Inc. in Sturgis, and he actually caught it. And so what I did was I went over there and we threw a suppressor on there and look down the bore and you could see that it caught midway through the suppressor it hit the edge of one of the chambers of where it was milled um, so actually we took that suppressor off he chucked it up got it all trued up in his CNC lathe and sure enough the threads were actually cut crooked from the factory enough wasn't a lot but it was enough that the suppressor was actually canned on the rifle I was shocked I was really shocked now this rifle come with a factory muzzle brake and that muzzle brake bore was way oversized way bigger than the tolerances that I actually have on the suppressor so it actually didn't make a difference but on the suppressor because it's nine inches long and the tolerance was tighter, it just caught the edge and blew the end of that suppressor off. Very, very lucky that it did, nothing else happened. Um, it wasn't Lane's fault. It was actually Savage's fault um, that they let that thing go out of the factory like that. Now I'm still, so what I had to do is I had, I had the gunsmith there at LRI, they cut me, they trued it up, got everything indicated and they actually cut those threads off and recut new threads true to the bore where it was 100% centered now. So anyway, that's kind of threw a wrench into everything because that took me a day or two to get everything straightened out. So what I had to get, it took me a week to get a new suppressor. Then then I had to go to the, the gunsmith and, and LRI fixed it and caught it and whatnot. So anyway, so today I'm back at the range and I am trying to set up this new rifle and I hope, well, I already know it shoots um, without hitting the, without hitting the, uh, the suppressor because I just bore sighted it. And I shot a couple shots through the chrono and 2,700 feet a second. And I'll show you what I'm using here. And I actually never, I've never heard of this company. I looked it up online and I found this ammo. It's their own ammo and I think it's their own brass because they have their own little mark on it. That U mark is right, right there. And I'm going to try it. Um, it's loaded with 285 grain Hornaday ELDMs, not X, the match grade bullets. So gonna try these I've shot a couple rounds so so far three rounds and so far everything looks fine so yeah I am going to continue to shoot this and see if I can get a good group that's the actual 
that's what I'm shooting and I'm shooting it like I said lane suppressor Savage 110 arc and scope and I just have it thrown up in the in the um, lead sled here just to just to bore sight it and then um, and to, to get it sighted in and yeah so basically once I get this thing sighted in if it's holding some pretty good groups I'm going to show you guys how I get my uh, my uh, drop charts printed off and all the ballistics and all the data loaded into the computer and, and the chart that I use when I go up to the thousand yard range and then we'll run up to the range if I can get this thing shooting and grouping I'm going to go up to the range here today and and uh, I just kind of want to take you guys step by step so if you guys haven't been here before my name is Eric from Guided I'm a hunting guide here in uh, Wyoming and if you guys been here before I appreciate you coming back and watching and uh, yes yeah, it's going to be a good show uh, let's see if we can get this thing set up getting ready to shoot this rifle here and just so you guys know this scope uh, mounted and leveled with le with level I'm hoping I can get this thing sighted in get a good group at 100 yards here and then I can take it out to 200 and then I can take it out to the long range so shot way high way way high 2652 all right guys I'm gonna try another one I'm gonna bring it down Whoa, that is way down there. 26.49 again on the chrono. All right. So here we go. One, two, I'm actually three inches high. I need to bring it down to around two inches high so when I go to the 200 yard range I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna touch it I'm just going to get a group here this one shot 2672 so it's between 2650 and 2700 but I'm gonna shoot two more shots with this and if it groups if I get a decent group out of it then we'll move on it looks really nice out but it's probably about 30 degrees 32 degrees right now that wind it wasn't bad when it wasn't windy but now that wind's picking up i'm just gonna let this barrel cool just a little bit whoa that is not good that's uh one, two, three inches. Three inch. Three inches apart. That's not what I want to see. Keep the bolt open, as you guys recommended. That one was 2641. All right, we'll try this again. Barrel is cool. I don't even see that one. I'm gonna replay it. What in the world? Didn't even hit the paper. Didn't even hit the paper on that one. That is, that is crazy. I'm not real sure what's going on. That one was 2732. So it was a little higher velocity than the other ones, but I don't know. Make sure everything's tight. Scope seems tight. Nothing's sliding. I had everything corked to the spec. Um, yeah, I'm not real sure. All right, gonna try this again. All right, so. That one shot right next to my other one. And that one was 25.97. Got the bolt open. We'll let this thing cool just a little bit. It's not too hot. Not really even hardly warm. So I know I'm holding steady. I'm trying to get a group, but unless that went in the same hole, I don't think it did. 
And if it's, if it doesn't group, I'm gonna have to go with some different ammo. If you don't shoot, maybe we'll sell her and get a different rifle. Um, like I said, I bought it used. Maybe the other guy had problems getting the shoot. I don't know. Um, maybe not. I'm gonna give it a give her a, a couple more different brands of ammo and weights and see see what what I do before I make a decision. But anyway, I'm gonna shoot again. See, I don't see that one either. Twenty six fifty out of that one. Yeah, man, this ammo is this ammo is like cow shit. It is all over the place. Dang! I got a shot here, a shot here, and a shot here. I think my my first course of action is going to be to try different ammunition. I'm going to see if I can pick up some uh, Hornaday. I seen it the other day, it's expensive, but that's okay. I knew that when I bought this rifle. I'm about an hour away from town. I probably could go run and get it, and maybe I will, just to try to confirm uh, that it's hopefully this, this cheap ammo that I purchased. And yeah, I might do that. So, all right guys, I'm not gonna sit here and waste waste any more of this ammo it's a five six inch group at 100 yards that's that's no good so eric here from guided i'm going to run to town <coughs> and see if i could pick up some hornet ammo i did see it the other day when i was in there i should have bought it then but i wanted to try this so i'm going to review my string here that was my first shot Twenty seven oh six, twenty six fifty, twenty six seventy four, twenty seven twenty eight, twenty seven eighty three, twenty six fifty four, twenty five ninety seven, twenty seven thirty two. So we go, we went from a twenty five ninety seven to a twenty seven thirty two, twenty six forty one. 2672 delete string anyway I'm gonna turn this off that might be my issue is that that ammo is is junk I'm hoping that's the case because I really want to keep that rifle so um, I'm gonna run to town grab some different ammo hopefully they got it still and I will be back here Alright guys, I'm back. So, ran the town. I bought a box of Hornaday Precision Hunter 338 Lapua 270 grain ELDX. And yes, they were $141.99. So, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this ammo. This ammo, no good. So, um, I don't know if anybody, any of you guys have had experience with this ammo, but Seems like this ammo out of that gun is not working. So we're gonna try this one. Hopefully this ammo does a lot better. Twenty-eight forty-two on that ammo. It doesn't even look like I hit the target. All right guys, looks like I hit, didn't even hit the paper, hit above the target. Um, hit the backstop, the dirt backstop. So I'm gonna bring it down quite a bit, see if I can get on paper here. Twenty-seven sixty-six. 
don't even see it on the paper guys this is crazy i'm just taking the brake off and I, and I don't know if that's what's causing this issue i am on the very top edge of the paper uh, all the way on the next target I am on the paper. All right, guys, I'm gonna shoot at the left target now. Barrel's cool. One, two, three, four inches below the last shot. Yeah, this rifle is kind of all over the place, guys. I double checked everything, double checked the all the screws from the floor plate up. The scopes tight. I torqued them all down to spec. Everything's torqued down on the base, the rings. Took the suppressor off. Yeah, I'm not really sure here. This is, it's kind of getting me stumped. It could be just a bad gun. Um, the uh, the threads that were cut on this original, the original threads that were cut on this rifle were actually cut slightly crooked, as I was saying earlier from the factory. And then when, when I had the suppressor on there, this is a lane suppressor, they're out of Rapid City. What happened was, is I, you couldn't tell just from having it on there, but it was actually crooked slightly. And so what it did was, is as the bullet passed down through the, the suppressor, about right in here somewhere, we took this off later on after, after the fact, and about right in here somewhere, the bullet actually hit um, the internal basically tube the part that has all the milling the the milled slots in it for the internal of the suppressor and it hit the edge and what it actually did was it took the end of it off right here it blew a big chunk out of this thing so pretty much ruined the suppressor I I went back to them and got a new suppressor it took about a week but the gun's not shooting so yeah, I'm not sure. Let that cool just a couple more minutes here. All right, guys. So I'm walking down to the target. I want to show you guys the last four shots I just shot after I let that barrel cool. Um, looked like the one was high right or high left. One was the next two were kind of good, and then the next one was off. So. I am not real sure what I should do with this rifle. Um, there's a barrel maker in Rapid City, which is not too far, a couple hours from here, so called KMP Barrels, and I had never heard of them. And uh, the guys at the LRI in Sturgis, that gunsmithing shop there, they're the ones that told me about them. I said a lot of guys use their use KMP barrels, and they're pretty good. Um, looking at the website, looks like 300, around 300 dollars or so for a new barrel, up to 28 inches long. And I'm not sure if I'm going to go that route. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, what do you guys think I should do? You guys think I should keep it? Think it's a lemon? Think I should get rid of it? Think I should try more ammo? Um, like I said, it's all factory. Here, I'm going to turn you guys around. I'm at the target now. So, the last four shots, first shot there, second shot there, third shot there, fourth shot there. These are some of the other, I did have that good group there, three shots in there, but there was one shot here and then the next shot was there. And then the next two shots were here. And then I moved down to here and I put three here, which was good. And then I moved over to this one, didn't adjust anything. 
got these two. And then the last group was those four right there after I let the barrel cool. But then I shot four in a row. So anyway, guys, um, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, kind of interesting day. Interesting uh, kind of getting this gun, getting to know this gun. And uh, I'm sure there's some things I could probably do to improve the accuracy. I tried two different brands of ammo with no avail. So anyway, hope you guys like this video, like this content. Please like and subscribe. My name is Eric from Guided, and we'll see you guys on the next one.